So, um, this is going to be about that thing that I found in my backpack that I was talking about. Um, it's it's about uh, Bathen and Sophia. I mean that story that we were writing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's just something, it's nothing, anything special, but it was something that made me smile, I guess, and made me laugh a bit. I, I, there's nothing to laugh about it, but then again, I still laugh. Yeah. Anyway, so... So... This is um, uh, this is possibly in a scene. It's it's a scene. It's in someone's home. I'm not sure if it's Batten's home or uh, Sophia's home. Oh, and I also found out the full name for each one of them. I mean, it's Batten Masood then Sophia Afrin. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Um, so yeah, uh, so I'll just start. So it's in again. The scene is in one of their homes, but most most likely maybe a friend's. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll just continue. Or maybe it's some. It's an old age home. I'm not sure. Again, I'll just continue. Anyway, a friend has a hard time breathing. She had had this for for a long time. Uh, so this is a conversation between Masood and Afreen. Masood says, I want you to lie down and breathe. Afreen laughs and looks reluctant. Masood says, I'm not joking. Trust me, just lie down here. Afreen lies down on the bed. Masood says, now close your eyes. Afreen does she, as she is told. Masood says, relax, breathe in and breathe out. I want you to imagine yourself in this, in this space right here, in this room. Before he could continue, Afreen cuts him off and says, well, I can just do that with my eyes open. <laughs> and she laughs. And Masood says, Masood doesn't find it funny. And he says, don't joke. Just close your eyes and imagine. Afreen reluctantly closes her eyes and tries imagining the room. Masood says, now picture the world that is outside this room, right outside the door, the street, the trees, the world outside, the cars and everything, the people. Can you hear the noise? Now imagine them leaving. Imagine me with the world outside with all its noise melting away like lava leaving behind an empty space Afreen takes her time going through the world outside the trees the flowers the ocean the cars the people walking small distractions water pouring children or baby crying somewhere music playing somewhere she watches them as they turn to lava and melt away she couldn't hear them anymore she couldn't hear anyone but a voice in her head 
and a feeling of warmth. Masood says, feel the breathing. Follow your breath in and as it goes out. Feel it move in you. Take deep breaths. Masood pauses and after a while he says, show me where it hurts. Afreen moves her hand over her chest to show a place close to her heart, the place where it hurts. With her eyes closed, she rests her hand there. It was her heart, somewhere really close to her heart. Masood, after a while, says, and why does it hurt? Afreen says, when I breathe, but before she could complete, Masood says, no, 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 no. Why does it hurt? So Afreen takes a longer pause. And she says, I'm afraid. And as the words leave her mouth, tears trickle down her face. Masood simply says, are you afraid of losing someone? Afreen nods. Masood says, have you lost someone? Afreen answers, everyone. Masood slowly holds her hand firmly in his. Afreen takes a long breath in. Masood says, Are you alone at this moment? Afreen nods. Masood says, Can you see their faces? Afreen nods. After a while, Masood says, Imagine them melting away. Those faces, imagine them mel melting away. With the world le they left behind you, imagine them all melting away. They cannot speak, but utter silence. They cannot speak, but utter silence. Masood makes her queen sleep, fall asleep. And it is for the first time that Afreen has slept before 12 a.m. And then the next day, Uh, the scene is that she wakes up, right? Um, so, what I wrote is the sunrise hits the nightstand with spectacles and a pack of smoke kept. Pack of smoke kept. Sufia wakes up. She holds her blanket tighter. She looks at the clock on her table, on the nightstand. She sees it tick 9.05 a.m. She couldn't believe as she raises her head. She looks out the window towards the sky. It was nice. Sufia grabs her spectacles and moves the blanket off her. Then the scene is that she is holding the knob and she turns the knob on and that's what I wrote <laughs> um, so then Sufia peeks out her room of her bedroom to see if anyone is there she was looking for 
the man of last night. <laughs> so not seeing anyone, she proceeds to get out of her bedroom and towards moves towards the living room. Sophia then finds Button sleeping on the sofa. She looks at him for a while. Then the scene cuts and moves to the kitchen. And the stove is turned on and a water is made to boil. In this time, oh yeah, the scene cuts again and now we saw we see Button waking up to the sound of TV switching channels. It was Sufia changing the channel and she was drinking tea. Sufia was taking a sip of her tea. Button sits up and rubs his face. Sufia, oh you're awake, she exclaims. Sufia smiles as she takes another sip. And that's the story. I mean, that's the scene. <laughs> so yeah, um, it is nothing special, I think, but it made me smile. Uh, kind of made me remember, you know, the whole thing, the conversation that we had about the story and, the, you know, their background, where they come from, what they want to do, how they end up together and how they are in the hospital and all that stuff, kind of. You know, the whole thing made me smile. And plus also, because <laughs> this kind, the scene is kind of similar to our situation in some sense. And it just, it's nice. It felt nice. It made me smile. So I hope it made you smile too. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I also have, you know, the, you know, where she comes from and where he comes from, those stories. Not, uh, I mean, we discussed it and I have those in my hand. Uh, yeah, anyway. Mm. I kind of always wanted to complete the story with you. And I was thinking, you know, a few days back, you know, let's say we do complete the story. Then what? Would we, would we just go and publish it? And would that matter? And I realized that it doesn't really matter if we publish it or not. I think the reason I wanted to write it is just because, you know, I just want to spend those moments making something with you. I mean, as I was reading the whole thing, I was, you know, wondering how you would pick up the story and, you know, how you would see things and I would want your opinion and I want to hear your opinion or your storytelling and, I mean, I already know it's going to be amazing and that's the thing. I know it's going to be amazing, but I want to feel it exactly how you would say it. I mean, So yeah, um, really, yeah, I do want to hear you, you know, say the story, want to hear your poems, and just, just what's going in your mind, I guess. But I, and you know, I mean, 
I've also thought of this stupid thing, I know, but you know, in heaven, I do not want with this bit I kind of wrote this down I wrote down this Virgo thing and yeah and I'll just say it okay one day we will meet where the lovers meet a field of no time a space of our own where our minds will entangle our pain and sorrow and happiness all fuses together but I won't let it happen in the divine in that divine fast way the way that every wish would come true the wish of reading your mind no I won't let it happen that fast I will take it slow I want to hear you articulate the words into air and I will breathe them in and I will breathe Breathe every sorrow, every pain, every memory, every happiness together. We will be high on our gentleness and care of each other's minds. Yeah, so I really want to hear it from you. Just do not. I guess just want to know it, you know. I want you to to go through that strug struggle or not struggle. Just want to hear your words, how you would say them. You know. I I I guess I'm making sense. I'm not sure. I hope I'm making sense. Anyway, so yeah, that's that. That's the story. And I will, I will see you soon. Inshallah. See you soon.